Call Enlightenment. Our YouTube channel is dedicated to all things Banner Lord related and especially Advanced Battlefield Command and Tactics. And today we are going to experiment with a really interesting tactic referred to as Pike and Shot. Now Pike and Shot is basically any kind of archer and pikeman. Now we're using Valandia here because they have the only pikeman as part of their main troop line. Of course a pikeman is a two-handed spearman with no shield. Uh, now this this tactic goes back many, many years, uh, but it doesn't really employ the same way it does in Bannerlord as it often did in medieval warfare. Uh, there were times where there were strictly pikemen and crossbow, uh, but the more commonly referred to part of it was in the 14 and 1500s with the Spanish tercios, and they would have firearms. Uh, and be intermixed in a square traditionally. Of course, there's the Shiltron, which is also a similar concept, a bunch of archers uh, protected by a line of pikes. But for this episode, what we're gonna do here is intermix our pikes and our crossbow. Uh, this custom battle here is by request, essentially. Someone said, hey, can you try this out? And so I'm gonna give this a shot. Uh, now, my previous attempts, I have not had tremendous success with this. I've had good success, but not tremendous success. Uh, so we'll see how we do here. Now we've got a big line of, of pikemen, of course, and two infantry divisions. Actually, we'll use three, uh, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But what we want to do is we want to get our crossbow here, our sharpshooters, intermixed with this enemy line of pikemen so that they they roughly overlap, right? You don't want these guys in the way, right? If there's a crossbowman and he's standing there and there's a pikeman directly in front of him, he can't shoot. So there's a little bit of delicacy here in how you line up your formations. Uh, and I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. That's why I'm taking an extra second. You see this now when you zoom in here, they have a nice distance between them. Uh, and of course, to get that, we're just using spread, which is F2, F3. Now, to make this a real battle, we do have other units here. We have two different infantry divisions, the sixth and the third. Uh, we'll be attacking a square there. I'm going to put an archer division out front strategically and square them as the enemy comes in. And then we have cav wings covering both of our flanks. They're not going to completely protect us, but that'll be some, something else that slows down the enemy cavalry. Uh, I should have said at the beginning, we were fighting Imperials. Uh, sometimes these episodes, I'm in such a hurry to produce them because you guys, you guys want these episodes to be quick, is my understanding. Sometimes I'm a little long-winded, so sometimes I'm going to have to sort of, uh, as we're looking over our guys here, tell you about a few of the things that we set up this battle in the first place. Uh, we're outnumbered by about 125, 130 troops, and the enemy has lots of cavalry. Now, they have a real army just like us, and what I mean by that is they have all Tier 5 units just like us, but they have 130 more units. As you can see, the power bar uh, generally favors them. Uh, now, we're using the RTS mod here just to speed things up. Don't worry, these aren't the fastest shooting crossbowmen of all time. Uh, and we're pelting their horse archers as usual. The horse archers really don't have much chance. Uh, although they have circled us, that might give them uh, a little bit of a, a distractionary effect on our forces. Kind of keeping an eye on them back here. So that crossbow division off to the left there, we're going to square that almost as soon as the enemy comes in. And we're going to square this third division of infantry as well so that these guys act as both the distractionary force and slow down the enemy. Now let's see what happens here with all these heavy cav charging into these pikemen. They're getting stood up. Uh, not every single one of them, but some of them are getting stabbed and stood up. And the idea, of course, with this strategy is they get stood up and then shot to pieces by our crossbow. Now, the enemy has a real army, like I said before, so they have infantry moving in. What we're going to do here is move one crossbow division off to the side, one infantry square towards the middle, basically to try to tell that infantry division, look, you want to attack this, right? We're, we're playing the stripper here. We're going to offer them, offer them a little taste. Uh, and now we're going to drag this square right to this infantry on the flank. This cav will protect us from the enemy archers, and we're going to destroy their infantry, hopefully with our infantry, right? Now that they're attracted to the square, uh, we can attack them with our 6th division here. You can see they're starting to scrum with our pikemen, and that's suboptimal, of course, because their, their units are going to crush our pikemen in melee. Pikemen have this big, long spear. I think they have a sword, but they don't have a shield, obviously. So I just charged with our infantry, and you see the death spam <laughs> reflects that, right? These guys are suddenly crashing in on the enemy's infantry's flank. And the crossbow and pikemen are sort of scrumming at the, at the margins and the front of the battle here. Uh, and it's definitely going well. This is better than I've experienced in the past. Of course, we devastated their cavalry. That's one of the keys. 
Uh, the other crossbow division is pretty well swarmed over there by cavalry, so we just have it in a square, right? It's just basically absorbing the the charging cavalry from a hundred different guys. Uh, this fifth our archer core, this fifth crossbow core, I've charged just in case there's guys that are out of ammo. That way, those guys can come in here and kind of deliver the coup de gras to the enemy cavalry, and it's working pretty well, right? A lot of their cavalry, they look really hesitant. I don't know about you guys, but their body language tells me they want to rout. Uh, and now the only last thing to deal with here is is whatever whatever guys are not uh, not routing and then kill their their archers. Of course, they have a mix of crossbow and archers. We're still going to have to deal with them so that we can get a scorecard for this, right? We're hoping I'm hoping to win by at least a hundred uh, or at least have a hundred units left, right? Which would be a dramatic win. Uh, but we'll see how this this goes. Defeating their archers is not going to be easy because I have all these pikemen. I have no shields. Uh, so because of that, I've moved the pikemen towards the rear, and now we're going to start pushing up in shield wall. The rest of their cavalry did flee. So now it's time to finish off their archers uh, with sharpshooters charging with these big barn doors holding held in front of them. I've heard other people refer to them as like a big car door. That's pr pretty accurate, right? They're the giant pavi shields, uh, and they provide outstanding protection against enemy archers. So all these divisions moving up and the pikemen towards the rear. There are going to be some pikemen losses. In fact, I'm kind of watching the death spam to see how many pikemen get killed. There goes one right there. Palatin guard killed a pikeman. Palatin guard killed a pikeman. Obviously, this is the weakness of these guys, right? Rock, paper, scissors, they crush cavalry, uh, but they're highly, highly vulnerable to archers. Now their archers are charging, I think, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we'll split. We'll split our not split. We will spread our pikemen here, and everybody can charge. At this stage, we have a clear numerical advantage, as well as real infantry. Uh, their archers are not going to be able to withstand this assault. Now they're getting some death spam at the beginning here. Hey, there's their lord. Let's see if we might as well kill their lord here in this episode, uh, as the rest of this battle at this stage is a formality. Uh, and it does look like we're going to be, I, I want to say wildly successful, but I would say very, very successful. Cut down a few of their routing troops here uh, and wrap this episode up. Although I want a baseline for this. I'm trying to think of how I can give a good baseline of whether or not I think this is effective. And I think what I want to do here after this battle is try what I usually do with Valandia. And I don't know if it's better or not. I don't know if it's going to work better, uh, but I think... I think it's at least going to be comparable and it'll be, it'll be interesting to compare the the results, right? It looks like here we have about half of our force left, uh, so we will try shield and shock after this. Yeah, 208 units surviving, which is an outstanding result, obviously. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, we're going to try a very subtle change to this. In fact, the, the amount of troops are the same. And as you can see, we're outnumbered by, what is that, 125 troops. Only this time, instead of pikemen, we're going to use Volgiers, right? We're going to use their, their slashing, hacking, two-handed weapon motherfuckers uh, and see if we can't produce a better result than, than about half of our force surviving. Now, that's a good result no matter what. I'm definitely satisfied with that, enough to recommend this tactic to you guys to say, hey, pike and shot works if you want to use this, this tercio uh, style. Uh, pike and shot. It's very effective. Of course, the real Tercio has actually had um, a, you know, a very primal, uh, uh, primitive uh, firearms, right? I think it was the, the prede predecessor to the Harkabussers, uh, the firearms, which obviously had just as much of a psychological effect as it did uh, actual destruction, right? I mean, cavalry charging a bunch of guns going off and smoke and fucking loud noises uh, would deter cavalry as much as anything from charging. Uh, but let's try this. Let's try a shield and shock strategy here. This is a tactic I've developed over the many months of playing Bannerlord, and I've found it to be highly effective. The idea here, especially against enemy cavalry, is you stand them up with defensive divisions. Typically, heavy cav works the best, so we'll put the second division. You can see it's only 42 units. We'll put them out front, but I think that'll slow them down enough, uh, along with a couple. I might even use three squares here. I got the fourth, seventh, I might even make one more infantry division to form as a square in the front because if you could slow down the enemy's approach with their cavalry and then unload on them with uh, with shock units, you can really overwhelm the enemy. 
Uh, now, to me personally, the key to this whole strategy is, is frankly how overpowered sharpshooters are, especially against armored units, especially against cavalry, horse searchers. They are fucking uh, devastating. Uh, so you can see I've got this shock unit, and what I'm going to do here is just tuck them in with sergeants, uh, the, the shielded infantry, and this heavy cav, with the idea being, uh, what is it, the horse archers that they're going to probably send up against us first. Whatever archers shoot at those guys, they will be, uh, they will have a buddy right next to them, right, with the shield or a big armored horse. Uh, and then behind them here, we're going to have this crossbow division. So two crossbow divisions out front. And we're going to square those guys, right? We're going to use those both as distractionary sort of magic uh, uh, sleight of hand for the enemy uh, cavalry and archers and infantry. But we're also going to use those guys to shoot at the beginning here and, and do a lot of damage. And look at this fucking division back here. Now, these guys don't have great line of sight. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm going to move these guys just slightly. And I'm going to move them the direction of the enemy's approach. Right, probably off to our left, and definitely the horse archers are going to circle to our left. Right, so we speed it up here using the RTS mode. We're trying to save your time, right? Save you guys this time. Try to make these episodes as concise as they can be while still talking a lot and delivering a lot of information. All right, so horse archer, or yeah, horse enemy horse archers coming in here, and it's a destructive crossbow barrage, right? They're coming in straight because we have these crossbow divisions on both of our wings, so they can't really cycle or circle us very effectively. Uh, and that was that. They just melted away. They were pelting their, their retreating horse archers as they come in. So here we go, right? It's time to start squaring these crossbow divisions. And what's nice about them is they will still shoot, uh, but they will only shoot if there's nobody near them, right? So you can square them. And let's see how many get skewered there. They lost a couple. They got a few guys speared there. This one off to the side, we're gonna, I'm actually gonna see if the enemy ignores it. We will send them over there and square them, but if nobody attacks them, we will simply use them to flank the enemy. Now I'm dragging my shock troops over here because ironically the heavy cav is totally swarming our crossbow division. Now we can send these third core guys in, right? I've got a third, uh, the first infantry rather is out front in a square. Uh, and we will use that to bait the enemy infantry. And then on the left, of course, I did it in a blur. I spread out that crossbow division because no one's paying any attention to it. Uh, finally, we will send our cavalry forward here. And what that does is it screens all of our forces from the enemy archers, right? While our Vulgiers are fighting, we don't want them shot by enemy archers. This way, that line of cavalry attracts a lot of enemy archer attention. And they're all holding their shields up. So they're going to do a pretty effective job uh, of holding attention and obviously preventing our shock troops from being killed, right? It's more, motherfucker, it took half my health. It's more shield and shock. So our shock troops are in here, absolutely roaring. I can, you can hear them just fucking bellowing as they smash everything to pieces. Behind them are the sharpshooters. Uh, and look at this death spam, right? This has been, the enemy archers fucking flat out routed. I think this was such a devastating counterattack here by this shock troop and by the formation that we set up here, that this episode is over. This battle, uh, well, and you could see why I use this, right? This this battle literally is over in the blink of an eye uh, between the power of the sharpshooters uh, and then the shield and shock, right? These shield protected Volgiers, I mean, holy shit, we still have 70, almost 80% of our forces left. And that was outnumbered by 130. And you can see the enemy has high quality troops, elite Manavliaton and whatnot, and they got destroyed. And look at our sharpshooters, almost a 20 to one KDR. Uh, all right, so summary here. Pike and shot works, there's no question. Uh, if you want to employ that, I definitely think, think it works, but how could you not want to do shield and shock uh, after this demonstration? I mean, that shocks even me. Uh, all right, so we'll wrap this episode up. Of course, you want to subscribe. If you want to see more tactics, friends, please comment and like all that stuff. I appreciate you, fellas, and I will see you guys next time.